Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Karina. I'm a researcher at IMAX Smith VUB. Uh, Smith stands for uh, Studies in Media and Information Technologies. Uh, we are linked to the Free University of Brussels and also IMAC. Uh, my background is in social sciences, uh, meaning that I look uh, to the connection between uh, society and new digital technologies. Uh, I will introduce you to the Hacker project, uh, which is already running since uh, 2016 and which uh, some of you will already uh, know. Um, the main objective of the project is uh, enabling uh, citizens or communities of citizens to easily set up uh, air quality monitoring networks for measuring outdoor air pollutions. We are also focusing on PM, uh, PM 2.5 or PM 10. Um, the main outcomes that we are envisioning with our project is first of all to have um, easier access to air quality information. Uh, as you know, the information now is quite dispersed or um, not easy understandable for a common citizen. Um, the second outcome that we are envisioning is to uh, set up a participatory sensing approach. Uh, this means actually that we believe in the power of citizens uh, and that we uh, distribute or support them with uh, assembling low-cost sensors to uh, measure outdoor uh, air pollution. Uh, although we know that they are of lower quality than official air quality measurement stations, we do believe that it is important to give them an indication uh, to which we are exposed to in our daily life. Uh, and then the, second, uh, the third outcome is to uh, create awareness and behavior change. Um, behavior change on, on different levels. First of all, uh, knowledge. Uh, we would like to um, distribute information about uh, the daily air quality uh, levels and then also how to take action yourself to contribute towards a cleaner air quality or to protect, protect yourself against it. Um, yeah, then I also, of course, need to mention that this is a European-funded project by the European Commission um, and that everything is provided as open source, both the hardware as the data that is collected. Um, this, uh, these are the partners that are involved in the project. Uh, we have a Greek coordinator called Draxis. They are also responsible for the technical development of the mobile app and the web platform. Um, uh, they are working closely together with CERT, uh, who is responsible for data discovery and integration. Then we have a very nice partner uh, from the Netherlands on subject who is helping us with the dissemination exploitation. Uh, then we have two official pilots right now, one in Germany, um, uh, represented by Bund, or Friends of the Earth. They have a very large uh, network of uh, citizens, around 400,000 spread all over Germany, who are going to be involved in the project. And this, uh, the other pilot is in Norway, uh, represented by NILU, that is the Norwegian Institute for Air Quality Investigations. Uh, they are also representing a network of asthma patients. Um, beside that, we have three affiliated organizations, of which one, Krevis, is here uh, located in Brussels, and um, um, his name is Dimitris, and he will be coordinating the contacts here in Brussels to form a network around air quality measurements. Um, this is seen as a test case, let's say. Okay, uh, then the concept of hacker, as you can see in the picture, we have uh, four different um, uh, ways of collecting uh, data around air quality. Uh, first of all, we have uh, mobile images, which I will explain later on. Then we have uh, three different open hardware sensors, a low-tech measurement through a cardboard sensor. This is uh, something for kids and youngsters. And then we have open air quality data sets. As you can see, uh, the web platform and the uh, mobile app are currently um, showing the data from Luftdaten, but also from open air queue. So all these different uh, data sources are coming together on one uh, map. Um, currently, we are supporting three different low-cost sensors. We label them as a Hacker Mobile and a Hacker Home. Uh, Hacker Home, we have two different types here. We are actually using the same PM sensor as uh, uh, Stuttgart is using, or uh, as you will assemble this afternoon. Um, but we opted for two different uh, microcontrollers, as we were seeing that uh, for non-technical uh, skilled citizens, it was too 
uh, difficult to assemble the Arduino-based uh, sensor. And that is why we opted for uh, Wemos, that is less soldering and putting the pieces together in a, a more efficient way, and it also costs less. Um, then the Hacker Mobile is actually targeted towards more expert users and professionals. It's a PSOC-based one. It costs around 50 euros. And that one is something that you can carry along in the city to measure uh, your individual uh, exposure real-time. It works uh, via Bluetooth that sends the data through uh, the mobile application. Uh, then we have the cardboard sensor. So I said this is something for uh, kids or for youngsters that they can do in school to have an indication about the air quality. Uh, therefore, you can use uh, a drinks carton um, from which you cut out a piece five by five. You put some petroleum jelly on it and then you hang it outside for 24 hours. Uh, after that, you take a picture of it uh, with a micro lens. So that's something that you need to buy. And then you take a picture of it uh, with uh, the mobile app of Hacker. Um, the mobile app of Hacker has a special algorithm right, right now um, to give you an indication about air uh, pollution by just taking a, an image of the sky or from that particular cardboard sensor. Um, to take a picture of the sky, some conditions are necessary. Uh, you need to have a good deal of, of sky. It may not be too cloudy and not um, in the uh, early morning or early evening. Um, and then through that specific algorithm that measures uh, light intensities, you will give an indication. Um, and, 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 and based on that indication, you know how good or how bad the air quality is. Um, so this is a screenshot of the web platform that we are currently having. Um, uh, on the right side, there are some filters. So uh, related to open data, there you can find the data from Luftdaten and from OpenRQ. On the left-hand side, there is the index provided that comes from the European Environmental Agency. Um, related to that, we are also providing tips of the day and personalized recommendations, um, what you should do or not do when um, the air quality is bad. So limited, limit uh, sporting, um, limited picnicking, for instance, or for asthma patients, we recommend to, to stay uh, inside, for, for instance, when the air quality is bad. Um, so then, related to the timeline, as I mentioned before, it's already started in 2016. In that year, we dedicated a lot of uh, activities towards the co-creation of the actual tools. We uh, organized multiple workshops uh, to gather user wants and needs. Then in the second year, uh, everything was developed and um, arranged together for the sensor parts. And now, uh, in the third year, we are engaging the actual communities. Um, and the first week of February, uh, everything was officially launched. Let's, uh, let's say. Um, some first results um, since the first week of February is that we see already now that we have 122 active sensors. This is mostly in Germany. The, the community there is quite interested in installing those sensors. And they also get pre-assembled ones from uh, their organization. Uh, they can have the option. They can um, buy the pre-assembled one or they can be involved in a workshop where they learn it to do it themselves. Um, we see that we have around 480 new user accounts and 465 uh, downloads of the application. Uh, right now we are having 206 uh, images of the sky that are being uploaded and um, an increase in engagements or impressions through social media. Uh, now, uh, to conclude, what I, what I wanted to focus upon in particular and what is my activity, especially in the project, is related to engaging communities because this is a question that is often posed. How do we involve citizens in, in, in citizen science, let's say? Um, to start with that, I wanted to show you this framework from uh, Hackley that describes four different levels of citizens' engagements that you can uh, reach, going from the level of crowdsourcing, where citizens are just data collectors or sensors. Here I can actually give the example of Curiosinosen. Um, they are pure data collectors. Uh, level two, distributed intelligence. Here, citizens are also going to help in analyzing the data. An example here is, for instance, uh, uh, Galaxy Zoo, where they are also um, doing some validation with the pictures. And then we can say that Hacker um, is positioned in between level three and four. So they are citizens are being engaged um, 
in data collection, data analysis, but also throughout multiple stages in the project, and hereby I'm referring to the co-creation of the solution and the evaluation of it. We do see, however, um, that citizens still need the help of a scientist to help them interpreting the data. So we are not there yet in terms of literacy skills. Um, then I also wanted to point out that uh, related to uh, the levels of difficulty, you need to take this into account when you are engaging citizens. Um, so we actually are foreseeing a learning curve for citizens being engaged in the project, going from a simple task to a more advanced task. Simple being uh, you are submitting your air quality perception, how are you feeling the air today? Uh, or uploading an uh, image of the sky, going from assembling the sensors. Um, our engagement strategy, or also how we often call it, is an engagement-related behavior change approach, as we believe by being engaged in our project, we are also going to establish uh, some behavior change as final outcome. Herefore, we are uh, re relying on uh, community-based social marketing and uh, the 7E framework. And uh, the 7E framework looks like this. We actually uh, come up with seven different types of behavioral change interventions, and we are using these different tactics to involve um, uh, citizens in different ways, going from initial participation to continued participa uh, participation. Uh, three I wanted to guide, uh, highlight is, for instance, uh, encouraging citizens. This is um, pointing out to extrinsic uh, motivations through gamification. So uh, by participating in Hacker, you are collecting points, you can earn badges, the more you contribute, the more points you gain. Although we see that this was not one of the favorite approaches um, of the users right now, it's still being uh, involved as a hypothesis if it can lead to behavior change or not. Um, then enlighten, this is a very important one. Uh, this is about providing information. Um, we must say that uh, when citizens are involved in citizen science, uh, you also have to give them some feedback um, back about the data quality itself. In the app, for instance, right now, it's being done by a check mark. If you take a picture of the sky and that this has been taken into account uh, by the data fusion algorithm, then you get a check mark, let's say. And then exemplifying is, uh, for instance, through storytelling, we are um, highlighting particular stories of users uh, being involved in the project. Uh, and this is also something that we will do with the VRT here in Brussels. Uh, then some last pictures to conclude. So uh, on the website you can also find different modules that you can download if you would be interested yourself to organize a workshop around uh, the sensors. Uh, there is a buying list available, there is tutorial ma material available and some feedback uh, forms so you can start independently organizing workshops. Actually, don't, you don't need our help in, in this way. Uh, uh, to show you the tutorial material, this was a uh, workshop already organized uh, in Norway with some students and also some uh, videos have been recorded to help you assembling the sensors on your own. So uh, that's it, if you would have any questions. Thank you for the presentation, my name is Damien Jacques. Uh, I have a question, may, maybe it's for all the speakers, but uh, when I uh, saw your presentation it made me think about it. Uh, it's about the special bias of, uh, of variability of air pollution. So when you are me measuring with, uh, using home sensor, I guess that within the street you have a lot of uh, variability. So my question is, uh, yeah, maybe you have special bias when you are looking to two different streets, when you will have a home sensor that will be at the top floor, for example, and one on the ground floor mm -hmm. or in the middle of the street. So wouldn't it be more interesting to use only mobile sensor to have very accurate uh, air pollution uh, mm -hmm. measurement? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, the first thing I maybe have to say then is that the exposure to air pollution is very context specific, time specific. So if you're uh, about to install a sensor in the backyard, in the front yard, it might uh, yield different results. Um, right now we see a more in interest in, in having the, um, uh, the Hacker uh, home sensors at the, as it is easier to install than the Hacker mobile sensors. So right there, uh, I, I can't answer your question right now if it wouldn't be better if we would all have uh, hacker mobile sensors. <laughs>